Welcome back to Slinging Sticks for the Blind as a Bat. Now, arrows. Arrows. Lots of them. Now, the thing about arrows is they are the consumables of the archery, of the sport of archery. Now, generally speaking, <laughs> if you're like me, and like a lot of archers, <coughs> you will lose them. Especially if you're shooting outdoors. You will break them. Um, you'll knock the points off, um, you'll rip fletchings off, you'll get Robin Hoods and damage the, the knocks. And half the time I can't be bothered to repair them. I'd rather actually make a new set rather than replace or repair. It, I think it's easier to be honest. Um, because if you're replacing a single arrow of a set, you've got to, there's things you've got to match up and it's just a pain in the butt. So I thought I'd do a quick and easy guide to what you need to know about replacing or even repair well replacing uh, building yourself or buying doesn't matter whether you build or buy you still need to know these things right three things you need to know first thing draw draw length now your draw length is how far it's basically a measure of distance from the furthest point of your bow as it faces away from you back to your your anchor point on your chin if, when I would, don't forget we're talking modern style archery target style olympic style archery so you have your bow and you have an arrow you place it on the bow on the string and draw it back to your anchor point the distance you want to measure is from the very furthest point of the bow to your anchor point. That would be your draw length. Now then, how would you measure your draw length? It'd be a pain in the butt if you were trying to measure while holding and getting somebody else. But there is actually an easy way and quite an accurate way as well. Surprisingly accurate, to about an sixteenth of an inch. And basically what you're going to do is get a stick or a big ruler, a meter long ruler, or a garden cane, anything straight. Place it and sit yourself up straight. And, come and relax and comfortable. Place one end on the bit on your sternum, the centre. You you just above weight, right on your breastbone. Extend your hand, wrap your thumb around it so you can hold it like that. Extend your other hand so your fingertips are touching, and then bring your hands down, allowing the the stick to slide through your fingertips until the shaft or the stick or whatever is parallel to the floor. At which point, grab hold of it, oh, well, take one hand off, go up and hold of it, and you're going to measure from where your fingertips end to the end of the shaft. That's your draw length. So once again, measure, put it on your, your chest, sit up straight. Hands up there. You don't have to be all tense, you can be quite relaxed. Let it come down until it's parallel with the floor. That's your draw length, from where your fingertips ended to the end where it was touching your chest. Now your average is going to be, the average shooter is a, has a draw length of 28 inches, believe it or not. That's average all over the world. It's so ubiquitous a measurement that manufacturers of archery equipment all use that measurement as a standard against which they, ba they base their um, arrow lengths, the spine ratings, um, which we'll get to in a minute, bow poundages, everything is based on 28 inches. That's why your bow might be 22 pounds at 28 inches. There we go. Next thing is your arrow length. Now your arrow length, good rule of thumb for that, is your draw length plus an inch. So if your draw length, like mine, was 28 inches, your arrow length will be 29 inches. Good reason for good some some good reasons for that. But basically it's going to prevent you from overdrawing your bow. Um, doesn't matter if it's a little longer, it's not so important, other than it will affect the way it travels down, down, down range. But you mustn't use arrows which are too short for you. Reason being safety. Um, I've actually seen this happen as well. A big guy friend of mine picked up a little guy friend of mine's bow with short arrows, drew back, let go, 
and the arrow ended up going halfway and going through the bow like that. He ended up with a bow like that. Because what had happened, the arrow was too short for him. So he drew it back too far and it had come behind the bow and as he loosed it, it actually hit the bow and split it. That's the good, that's the best case scenario. Now I haven't seen this personally, but I have seen footage where somebody's done exactly the same thing, loose the arrow, the arrow has hit the back of the bow, or the belly of the bow, flexed and shattered. Not just broke, but shattered. Cloud of wood splinters all over the place. And it's literally inches in front of your face. Not a good thing to happen. So, please, don't shoot arrows which are too short for you. Find out, find out your draw weight, add an inch, that's the arrows you need. So when you're buying arrows, and you say to the guy that you, who's building them for you, or when you build arrows, say, right, I want 29 inch arrows. And you would measure it from the bottom of the string groove in the knock to the point, and say, right, that's your 29 inches, or your 28 inches if you shoot 27, or blah, 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 whatever. Um, that's the length of arrow you would buy. Um, right, so the next thing is fairly, fairly straightforward. Um, so draw length, add an inch, gives you arrow length, arrow length measured from the bottom of the groove of the string groove to the point when you're buying arrows. Um, right, so there we go. Never shoot shorter than your draw length. The next thing is spine. Now spine is just a measure of the amount of flex in an arrow shaft. Um, that's it, it's a mountain of measure. Now, when you're buying arrows which are made out of a modern material, such as carbon fibre, fibreglass, aluminium, and um, that sort of thing, the measurements or the ratings are like 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. They're, done, they're actually um, increments of an inch, a tenth of an inch, basically. So a point, like a 500, is 0.5 or half an inch deflection when measured. The way to measure them is they actually put them in a, in a clamp them in a jig and then at 28 inches they put a 2 kilo weight and measure the deflection from the 2 kilo weight. So a half inch deflection means a five, is a 500. So if you need a 500 that's what you go for. A um, thousand is an inch deflection. 1500 is one and a half inch deflection. So the bigger the number the more the deflection you get which means the weaker the arrow is. For instance, um, if you're shooting a 38 pound bow, you need a 500, a 500 spine shaft in modern materials. If you're shooting a 30 pound bow, like mine, it's a 700 shaft. A 20 pound bow is about an 1100 shaft. So the bigger the number, the weaker it is, and you match that to the weakness of your, or the strength of your bow. With natural materials like wood, it's measured a bit differently. You match the poundage of the shaft to the poundage of your bow. Again, they measure them in the same way. Clamp at one end, put two kilo weight at 28 inches, and measure the deflection of a graduated, graduated scale. Um, but with, arrow, with wooden arrows, if your draw weight is 30 pound, you would get, hopefully, you would get as near to a 30 pound draw, uh, shaft as you can. So, 30 pound draw weight. 30 pound shaft. Unfortunately, they only sell them in increments of 5 pounds. So you'd buy 20 to 25 pound shafts, 25 to 30 pound shafts, 30 to 35, 35 to 40 and so on. So if you've got a 30 pound draw weight bow, you would buy, always go up, don't go down, you buy 30 to 35 pound shafts. Now the good thing about that, which we will get into at some point, is you can batch weight them and batch make them, the more shafts you buy, into specific weight shafts. Like you can make a set of 30 pounds, or a set of 32s, or a set of 34s. But it's, it's, it's a little bit more involved to it, but it is possible to do that. Um, that's it. So the three things you need to know. Draw width, draw length. Yeah, which is how far you draw the ball back. Your arrow length, which is your draw length plus an inch, minimum and the spine weight, which is a measure of the flex of the shaft. You need to know that to match the flex of the shaft to the bow, so that when you fire it, for instance, if you have a 30 pound bow shaft and you shoot a 1500 spine or a 20 pound spine shaft, 
it's going to go shooting off to the left by quite a way in some situations because it's flexing too much. It's too weak um, because part of the it's part of the arches paradox, which we'll talk about at another time. So you've got to match spine weights. Now all the information you need to match spine weights you can get off charts in retailers. So you walk in at any archery retailer and you'll find Easterns and Hoyt and people like that have got charts up on the walls like posters where you just cross reference, reference the weight of your bow to the length of the arrow you want to shoot and it'll tell you what spine you need. Now there's more to it than that but that's basically all you need to know to buy arrows. Um, so arrow length, sorry draw length, arrow length, spine. Um, spine in modern materials is you'll have to read it off a chart. You can get information off apps online. Spine for natural materials like wood is pound for pound. 30 pound draw weight bow, 30 pound arrows. Near, or t near enough, t give or take a bit. Anyway, that's it. So, um, look forward to talking with you again next time. Um, I don't know what we'll be talking about, we'll, we'll figure something out. So, take care, um, enjoy your, sting your stick slinging, and we'll talk again soon. Cheers, guys.